Hello, and thanks for joining Your Body Advocate podcast. I am Ruth Cummings, your host, and today I'm going to talk about how does faith affect our body? Let's take a deep breath to relax. Ready? Okay, here we go. You're listening to Your Body Advocate, telling your body's side of the story. The podcast dedicated to supporting and improving your body-mind connection so you can live a pain-free, passion-filled life, dissolving one body tension at a time. Discover the healing properties of your own body language and together let's explore ways to support and improve essential self-talk. Now, here's your host, Master of Encouragement and Body-Mind Life Coach, Ruth Cummings. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining Your Body Advocate podcast. Here we are again, still advocating for our body, giving our body a side of a story. So I get the question a lot about faith in the body. How does faith affect the body and the healing process? And I have very distinct ideas about this and a theory because I worked on so many people in so many different religions that I realized there is a correlation between faith and healing or faith and being stuck, staying stuck, not being able to move forward with many things in people's lives, not just healing or I guess physical healing, but also finding their way, finding happiness, um, having a clear direction knowing what you're supposed to do in life. I'm putting air quotes around that because that can be, it's, it's a very individual type of answer and question, right? But let me tell you about faith and the body. Years ago, many of my teachers have taught different things, great teachers, about how faith and God is found in the body. And one thing that I've learned is that I can find, my theory is I can find it from the inner left toe all the way up through the foot to the inner left knee, then across the leg, the left leg, and the entire leg, not just the top or the bottom or the middle, the entire middle of that leg, like a band over to the left hip. And from there, an opposite band, a little bit thicker, probably about six inches of the entire body all the way up to the right shoulder. And then from there, it moves depending on the person, possibly up the neck and possibly just stops there in the shoulder. And it creates this bending of the right shoulder and the left hip up towards that. So it's kind of in a, it's in a position like of a C and, but it's in one position. Now, this type of motion of the body can happen for many reasons, not because you have a faith issue. A lot of different things. If you're a thrower, tennis player, and you're constantly going across your body, if you're pulling up your hip because you have back pain, um, many different things, different like different types of digestive digestive issues, different types of things in your chest going wrong, breathing, or different types of injuries, feeling betrayed, so that you have to protect your lower, your upper back. There's a lot of different reasons. So it's not always a faith issue, but when I find that there's something along this line between the bottom left toe coming up like that line to the outer left hip up to the right shoulder. Um, then I start looking at, hmm, what else can we talk about? What else is keeping this from healing? Why is this chronic? And the question that I ask people, and a lot of my clients, you will recognize this statement, but I will ask What is your relationship with a higher power? And then I wait for an answer. What is your relationship with a higher power? Because the answer to that question gives me many clues, and it can give you a lot of clues today as well. So I wanted to just share a few. If you are angry with God, something happened and you're angry with God, that can create, as you would imagine, some type of stuckness, right? This anger, it's like, and, and sometimes we don't really know we're blaming God or we're angry that something happened in our life or in the world. And there's this 
anger towards God, this lack of forgiveness, and this fiery type of non-calm communication, right? And there's, and if you don't have a relationship with God, then it's just like in your body and there's no one to really talk it out with unless you come to someone like me. And so it's hard to find someone to actually talk about that because it's not always accepted in our society to talk about those types of conversations. But if you have anger towards God, then look at that and try to heal that relationship. That can actually help your entire body calm down and you can start to see things heal a little bit faster. Some of the things that can help that kind of anger, besides massage, counseling, qigong. If you haven't heard of qigong, it's like a, it's like a um, energy movement. It's very, very simple. It can get very complicated, but it's, it can be very simple, very easy to follow, and you learn to move energy and breath. And that's one of the best ways I have found when people don't have support around them or they can't afford massage or different things, different treatments. Qigong is something to find. There's a great, great ways to find that online, and most of them are free. So counseling, um, massage, and Qigong are some of the ones I would recommend. Also acupuncture and Ayurveda is how I would, those probably would be the ones that I would choose. So, but learning to move that anger and to take it out and to unpack it and have that conversation with God, that type of block in your faith can really, really stop your progression in so many aspects of your life, not just your body. And that's what I find, but that also stops relationships. It'll stop you from receiving love or giving love. It will stop many things that just taking that out and um, just processing a little bit, looking at it at a different angle, in a different lens, maybe talking to a friend about it. Go talk to a priest if you have, if you're in a church or a pastor or a rabbi or someone that can understand your faith and understand how it might get, be getting stuck and what can you, you can do about it. So that's the one thing. Are you angry at God? So that's about that, okay? The next thing is, do you feel like you deserve to be loved by God? This is another main one that I hear. I don't deserve. There's a lot of shame involved. Something happened maybe, or you don't you just don't feel like you're worthy of God's love. And this can cause a lot of stuckness as well. It's a different stuckness. So like anger is like fiery and you can feel a lot of heat in the body and a lot of fast movements and um, kind of like aggressions, but sometimes it's like microaggressions. And like you could be outwardly very happy, but there's like these microaggressions in your body that I can find or your body is is speaking in pain that you just don't understand. Things come up that have never been there before, never had shoulder pain, and then all of a sudden it's doing this weird thing and it came out of nowhere. That's um, and also a red flag for me if someone says something like that. And it could be anywhere along that line. Okay, so from the from the right shoulder across to the left hip, to the hip around that area, and then down the leg to, to the inner side of the left knee, and then down the inner side of the, the calf and the shin to the left toe. So those are the that's what I would follow for that. All of these you could do hot compresses, you could do I wouldn't do cold. So I would suggest hot compresses and never do that without something in between the heat and your skin, just like with ice. I would do hot compresses. You could put your legs up and let them drain. You could gently massage up your leg. You could, um, I wouldn't really suggest if, if you're acute or if, if, if it's hurting, I wouldn't do foam rolling yet. I would do some gentle stretching and maybe journaling. Um, gentler types of sessions and treatments before you start getting in there. If you're getting in there like that, if if you jump to that conclusion right away, I would look at the anger angle of this because the anger angle will attack it with anger. You know, all right, go in there and get it as hard as you can. And if you can consider 
why that's being so aggressive and try to calm it down a little bit. It's amazing what you can do to to have the body calm down once it trusts you and it can relax and let go. That's a really uh, something to think about, a clue for the anger. Okay. So another one I wanted to talk about is if you don't believe in God. So there's this lack of faith. You know, I don't believe in anything um, or I don't believe in God or I'm um, sometimes people uh, will say um, I'm, I'm faithful. Wait, I'm, um, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. That's a big one, right? I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. And that can, um, that shows up in the body where it's like kind of ambiguous, right? There's kind of this ambig- amb- ambiguity and that kind of shows up in the low back and it'll cause like um, digestive issues or low back pain. And it's on that left side. So like you'll see um, uh, like different types of uh, digestive constipation or diarrhea and it's on the left side of the body. Sometimes hard periods will be over there. You'll have your left side will have pain on the front of your hip or the glute area. And it's kind of uh, concentrated on that left side. That's an ambiguity, uh, not grounded in your faith. Now, you don't have to believe in God to have faith. So you can have faith in yourself. You can have faith in um, the world. You can have faith in the universe. There's something about faith is important in the body. Now, I haven't put my finger on it yet, and I'm still looking. I'm still working on people and asking that question day after day. but. There's something about not having faith that um, has the dots not connect from the toe to the knee to the hip to the middle of the body up to the right shoulder. And so it's interesting because when we talk about it with those clients, they often talk about an anger from religious problems they had as a child. They were raised Catholic. They were raised uh, Mormon, they were raised Jewish, whatever they were raised, and there was something really bad that happened or something that didn't settle very well, and it didn't settle in their body. So if I can help them um, find the path of forgiveness for those times a long time ago, then that ambiguity doesn't have to lean to God, but I do believe it does have to be resolved in order to have that faith puzzle piece that can help your body heal much, much quicker than without that faith piece that I have seen. Now, this, again, is just my theory. So those are my three things that I wanted to talk about today, because this this can go can get much, much deeper. Right. I just wanted to just just touch the surface on how faith can touch the body. So, again, what we talked about was. So the first one, are you angry with God? Second one, do you feel worthy of God's love? Do you feel worthy? Are you sh- are you feeling shame? Are you do you feel like you have what it takes to be loved by the higher power? So that's number two. And number three is that you are re- spiritual, not religious. So there's this kind of ambiguity about where your faith lies and where to focus it. So because of that, there's a lack of grounding and a lack of focus sometimes. And that's how that can affect your body in that manner. So those are the three. There's there's a lot more, but I just wanted to go over those three real quick today for our little short podcast and to help you today to um, find ways to use your faith to help you heal, help you be happy, help you succeed in life, help you be the best leader you can be. So Thank you for joining me today. I will talk about this more if you guys want it some more. And remember to include the unincluded. You guys, be kind, be open, and spread love and kindness one smile at a time. All right, you guys, thanks so much. I'll see you at the next podcast. Bye. Thank you for listening to Your Body Advocate with Ruth Cummings. We're so glad you've joined us today and truly believe you can live a pain-free, passion-filled life. To connect with Ruth, work with Ruth, or to grab your free ebook, go to ruthcummings.com. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss our next episode.
Until next time, friends, be open, include the unincluded, think outside the box, and spread love and kindness one smile at a time.